People often get confused by all the different print processes that Curtis worked in. And perhaps it would help if you understood the time progression of how they got created. When Curtis was in the field, he created something called a cyanotype. It's a blue photograph that was simply required combining two chemicals in the field, coating it by hand with a brush on any kind of piece of paper you had around, and exposing it to the sun. So it required no dark room, very simple process. It is related, actually a precursor to the architect's blueprint. And these are beautiful prints. Unfortunately, virtually all of them have been destroyed. We would assume that all of Curtis's 40 to 50,000 negatives had cyanotypes made of them. And I believe fewer than 1,000 of them exist, maybe only a few hundred. Once Curtis left the field and got back into his darkroom, he would make what are called reference prints. And these are very simple black and white silver prints that were, as the name suggests, for reference purposes. He could get a little better idea about what was in the photograph. He would then edit further and start making more finished prints. And once he started making more finished prints, they were either for inclusion in his North American Indian, and those would be photogravures, and there was an extensive mastering process. He would be working with master printers. They would create sample prints. He would approve them, change them to get at the finished prints. So and that is the main body of what Curtis created, but much smaller body, perhaps in total only 2% of what Curtis created, were the beautiful platinum prints, gold tones, and some rare forms of silver printing. And these were done primarily, if not exclusively, for either sale or exhibition purposes. And these are quite rare. The platinum prints, which I think most connoisseurs consider the most beautiful form of all Curtis's printing, comprise less than one half of Curtis prints that survive, but are quite extraordinary and quite beautiful. Very complicated, very expensive process. The gold tone, of course, was Curtis's favorite process and one that many people still consider to be the most beautiful. They have an amazing luminosity and three-dimensionality that simply is unrivaled in the photographic medium. Curtis, I believe, may be unique in the whole history of photography in that he actually created more platinum prints than silver prints. But he did create a small body of the silver prints, which were almost always sepia toned so that they looked similar to his photogravures and his platinum prints, all warm or sepia toned. But the silver prints were much rarer, much more seldomly done. The silver printing is much easier to do. But again, photographic curators, photographic connoisseurs recognize that you cannot get the same beauty and results and richness with a silver print that you can with a beautifully executed platinum print. Curtis also did a small body of experimental prints, and these have been done with some sort of gum process, uh, some that look like they incorporate an India ink, um, complex, and so, oh, some with watercolors or other colored pigments. So again, a tiny body of experimental works. And in my 37 years of collecting, I have seen fewer than 15 of these experimental prints.